everyone welcome back to unicorn dust designs if you are clicking on this video for the first time hello my name is sammy i do diys wood signs and there's always tons of laughter on this channel so if you think that's something you would be into then make sure to keep watching this spring mega video starting off we're gonna take these wooden bird houses these come in a lot of different styles so make sure you take a look out of them at them. I got them in three different styles and I am taking a bunch of textured stickers from Dollar Tree. We have these which I've used on previous projects and then we also are going to be using some circular puffy stickers. So for these I am going to be adding them only to the roofs of the houses. So for this one I'm going to do it in the front and the back and of course remember you guys this is just inspiration you could add as much bling on here as you want now this ends up getting scrapped later i'll show you what we do with the roof of that house so for this one we're getting the small circular puffy stickers and i'm going to put seven on the top shingle and then six on the bottom shingle and then we're going to repeat that step for the opposite side. Now these do not need any additional adhesive. They stay put once you press them down firmly. Absolutely love these as you can see. <laughs> All right, so now painting. I am using Rust-Oleum's Blush Pink serenity blue and chiffon for all of these projects today and essentially all of the bodies of our houses are going to be opposite colors the base is opposite colors the roofs opposite colors so i am not going to put you through the torture of watching me paint every single house because I think you guys get the concept of painting here. But just be careful when you are painting because since we are using contrasting colors, you don't want um, your lines all messy. So I do a single coat of paint on like the bases and the body of the houses, but on the top of the houses, on the roofs, I'm gonna do two coats of paint so that I can try and cover up as much of the color on these stickers as possible. So this is the second one where I said we're gonna scrap that later because it looked so weird that all of the other houses had texture on them and then this one didn't have it on the roof. So we're gonna put some of these bigger puffy stickers. Now these you guys just lightly place them on there. That way you can move them around and then when you for sure know that that's where you wanna stick them, then press firmly and then they will not go anywhere. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and continue on painting. Hank, oh, oh, slobber. Puppy pad to the rescue, see? Multiple uses, <laughs> he's so cute. Okay, so now taking some mineral chalk paint by Waverly and our new favorite plaid chip brush. The link is down in the description box for you. I am gonna distress the, the roofs of the houses. Now, this is my preference. Some of the color in those stickers were still peeking through, so I thought this would be a great way to kind of blend it. And also, as you guys know, I love to mention, I think it makes the uh, stickers pop a little bit more on the roofs, and I think the mineral color was like, just what it needed. I was almost gonna do antique wax, but so glad I stuck with that color. So now we are going to take the chiffon chalk paint and I am gonna use this, um, it's my Apple Barrel Synthetic Brush. These come in like a three pack at Walmart for I think $4. And I love using this paintbrush when I am painting on glass. It is very smooth and I don't know, it's just easier to apply for me. So we are gonna paint three of these candlesticks. One is larger than the other two. I didn't know they came in three sizes. And we are going to do two coats of paint on all of these. And then taking my stencil brush from the Dollar Tree and that mineral chalk paint again, we are going to distress it down. Now I know distressing isn't for everybody, so just take these and use them as inspiration. And what's nice about these, I always say it in these like spring videos, these can be any color. So they can be everyday decor if you just change up the colors. And that way, you know, if, if you're not into the spring vibes or the colors I'm using, just change it up. 
So now taking the birdhouses, we're gonna take the Fix It All Super Glue, it is my favorite, and then hot glue. So for those of you newbies out there crafting, we use the super glue for longevity and we use the hot glue for that immediate hold so that your houses aren't gonna be moving around on you. So we're gonna repeat that with the last one and then we are going to add just a little something else because of course I couldn't leave them by the way, I couldn't leave it alone. So I'm gonna be doing a finger bow. I'll attach this video down in the description box for you and up in the cards. And I am just making a two loop finger bow and we are going, I tried it a couple different places, but decided we're gonna put it on the little perch right here. And I think it just added, just so it wasn't so plain Jane, you know, it just added that little extra that it needed to be super, I don't know, look at how cute these are. I eee, I love these, they're already out in our home on a shelf and they came out so great. I hope you guys love these. Comment down with a heart um, if you loved these little houses. We're gonna start off with this Dollar Tree sign, take the twine out, grabbing our chiffon by Rust-Oleum. I am just doing a nice, messy paint job like I usually do. You guys know I like the rustic look here. So I do one coat, we're gonna dry it and then move on to the tissue paper. So these are both from Dollar Tree. I chose the one we're gonna go with because it wasn't as stark white. Now I am going to basically tear these apart, okay? So I don't want any straight lines on it. I want it really distressed looking. So. I'm gonna get some Mod Podge, put that on there, nice and smooth. You only need a light coat. And then I am going to basically pat the tissue paper on. This stuff is super thin, so you do not wanna rub it at all. If you get a little texture, that's even better. We want it to look distressed. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom right side. And you're gonna add as like little or as much as you want of this. So I'm gonna apply that. Then we're gonna go ahead and get our sanding block. You could get that from Dollar Tree or any store really. And you're gonna go ahead and hit the edges of this in downward motions. It comes off so easy. After I'm done doing the edges, I go over the actual tissue paper and this kind of dulls down the color a little bit and it makes it feel more like it's a part of the sign versus looking like we stuck a sticker on there. You know what I'm saying? So distress that down as much as you want. Then after I'm done with this, I'm like, uh, it needs more. It needs a little bit more. So I just add like a bigger piece in the middle, a little piece here and there. Um, I always either put too much or too, or like too little of Mod Podge. There's no happy medium for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And, and this is where, you know, let your imagination go wild. Do as much as you want to do on this. After we're done adding whatever tissue paper that we want, then I'm gonna take that sanding block again and go back over it with our sanding block here. So I wanted this to look almost like the entire sign at one time was covered in this tissue paper and as time gone, has gone by, it has worn down to just this. Now taking the um, Waverly Antique Wax, I'm just distressing this down, hitting the sides, and then after this, we're gonna measure how big we want our decal to cut. Oh, and then Hank wanted to join us while we were cutting vinyl. So now we're gonna weed our vinyl with our Cricut weeding tool. And weeding is just basically taking out all the extra that you don't want showing. So we just want our words showing. So we're taking everything out but the words, taking our transfer paper, which moves our decal from point A to point B. And now I'm just going to eyeball this here. And y'all, do you, that literally took me less than a minute. I sized it up. I just searched in images what I wanted. You do not have to be a pro and you get these amazing, beautiful DIY signs. And I mean, was that not easy or was that not easy? So this is how it came out. I am so happy with it. I love the bold black decal on the sign because it really makes the words pop out. And I love this tissue paper. You were just moving right along. Here, this box is so haggard, y'all. I tried to take off the, the paper and it didn't work so well, but that's okay. 
because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So we're taking burnt umber here and I am going to put this all over this box. This is just a Dollar Tree box that had, I don't know, a pumpkin on it or something. And I'm making sure to get the sides and the top and I do do two coats on the side just because I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. Now taking the Crackle Medium by Folk Art, do not do what I just did, okay? Put it in a bowl and brush it on that way. Make sure to get all of your sides, all of the fronts, and then we are gonna use our heat gun. Now the heat gun actually helps it crackle even more. And I learned that from a subscriber when I first started my channel, so thank you. And now taking a contrasting color, we are taking, um, I think this is Vintage White by Folk Art in their acrylic paint. And then we're gonna paint over. And y'all, you have to use acrylic paint, at least that's what the bottle of the Crackle Medium says. And I have tried it with chalk paint and it has never worked for me. So you will already see right here that crackle start coming through and it is absolutely gorgeous. I wanna do this with real wood and like sell some above because I was so impressed. And you could see, see that squiggle mark from what I did with the Crackle Medium? That's why I say, don't do that, put it in a bowl and brush it on. And this is also why you need contrasting colors because if I would have used cream on cream, it wouldn't look as cool as it does now. So taking some burlap ribbon, you could get this size at Walmart and I actually found a bunch at Dollar Tree this summer. I'm gonna cut the seams off the sides here and then I'm gonna fray it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna attach it with some hot glue. Now put just a small, small bead of hot glue. And then as you'll see, I just kind of tap it, just tap it. I don't want all that hot glue coming up through the burlap. We don't want it looking all nasty. And then I decide to just put some dots. So just dot, 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 tap it, rub your finger over it. You don't want a lot because then it'll come through and then you'll have a cloudy white mess on top of your burlap. All right, you guys, next, one of my subscribers, and I'm so sorry, I should have wrote your name down before, um, in my YouTube or in my Facebook group, she posted one of these flowers. So what you do is you take your burlap, and then I am just getting pliers, and I'm taking out the middle of this, and I'm leaving like three, three strands on each side. And then I'm gonna fold this over here, Okay, and we glued it, folded it over, and then we are gonna start rolling this up, and then you're gonna glue it kind of in the middle and at the ends, and then we are going to kind of clean it up. So make sure you guys join that Unicorn Dust Designs group because people show inspiration all the time, and I was so inspired by her piece that I knew I had to try and recreate it. So I'll leave you the link down in the description box of the YouTuber that she referred me to, to make this. So as you can see, it starts looking like a flower. All I had to do was press it down. And then it was like, I wanted to secure it in the middle and then on the outside of it as well. And it was a little too, I don't, well, I don't wanna say, uh, it was too like high on the back, like it was poking off of the frame. So at first I start with a little bit, then I put it on the frame, Let's see how much it pops out. So I cut even more off the back and it stayed together perfectly fine. And then I found the cutest, I don't know where I got this flower thing from, but I found it in my bead stash, put it inside the flower and how adorable does that look? So then I just go ahead and get some hot glue. We're gonna glue that to the corner of our sign here. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. And then we are gonna go ahead and get this little clip. I think I got this from Joanne's last summer. Put some antique wax on it. We're gonna hot glue that straight to our sign. And that is going to be the end. I guess I wanted to show you guys me drying that up. Okay, so hot glue, apply it to your little sign. And this is, oh, I just love it. Look at that crackle. Look at how aged and perfect and with the burlap and the bird, it's, ah, oh, and that flower, thank you so much for showing it to me because it's gonna be one of my new favorite things to do. All right, we are gonna go ahead and move on to some. 
All right, you guys, I hope you are enjoying this video so far. If you're new to my channel, I like putting out these compilation videos, gathering, you know, my old DIYs from the previous year, sometimes even from the current year, and putting them in one video for you. That way you're not having to go through my channel and find them. They're just in one place for you to watch. And I usually do this seasonally or if there's a holiday coming up, I usually will put one of these together for you guys. And it kind of like jump starts what I'm going to be getting into for like the next month or two. So this is a mega spring video. So I put some spring DIYs. There's a little sprinkle of maybe Easter stuff in here, but not too much. And that is me letting you know we are jumping into spring mode here on Unicorn Desk Designs. You guys know the stores are already coming out with the stuff. So I want you guys to be able to get those things. I want you guys to be able to look at, you know, these DIYs and go out and get things if you need them. Or I'm sure you can find things in your craft stash already. So you guys, you know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the video, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'm out of breath. I'm pregnant. <laughs> It's an absolutely free way you can help your girl out here on YouTube. And if you check my description box, I have a TikTok. We have a Facebook group. Make sure to answer all three questions, please. And I also have an Instagram. So a lot going on. So check it on down in the description box. And with that said, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the rest of this spring video. Next up, we are taking this, um, they're the plastic plates from the spring collection that are out right now, and they actually come in a pack of five. So these are beautiful to use as a plate, or we can decorate it, which we're gonna do. So I'm just taking the smaller puffy circular stickers, and we're gonna put that in all of the scallops, then taking that chiffon chalk paint and just a chip brush, we are gonna go around the front and we are gonna put it on the back. Why are we putting it on the back? One, your girl has to have a finished product. Like it has to be finished looking. I want it to look like you went and bought this out of store. And two, this is gonna be on like one of those little uh, plate stands. So you're gonna see the back of it. So then again, taking this mineral, we are gonna distress that down get those scalloped edges popping up and those stickers. Oh, looks beautiful love this brush then taking some scrapbook paper i do not know where this scrapbook paper came from it has been in my stash for a long time so we are going to trace out our bunny that bunny is from dollar tree get our jumbo glue stick my favorite and then we're going to go ahead and put that scrapbook paper on i just love how vintage this looks with all the handwriting on there it's gorgeous then taking our craft knife by Artesa, we are gonna go ahead and clean that bunny up so we don't have a bunch of overlapping paper. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy, you know? Okay, let's, there we go. Oh, this is mama getting crazy because we ordered some things off Wayfair, saved our hard earned money to buy brand new stuff and they came without screws, they came without instructions and my husband's like, you're better at that, you do it. <laughs> So anyways, we are going to go ahead and this is just popsicle sticks that I'm cutting up and layering on top of each other with a hot glue gun so that we can use it as a riser behind the bunny. Now I didn't want the bunny popping up too far. That's why I didn't use one of those like the wooden cubes from Dollar Tree. I created my own. We're going to attach that to the back of our bunny and then we're going to glue our bunny on to our plate. There we go. Now taking some Spanish moss, also from Dollar Tree. If you guys don't like getting dirty, don't use this because it gets everywhere and yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not neat to work with. So this bunny was just raised just a little bit. So it was nice because I was able just to stick this underneath the bunny without any adhesive and it has totally stayed put. But if you are gifting this to somebody or selling them, then I would recommend putting a little bit of hot glue or adhesive back there just so it doesn't go anywhere but it was tight enough where it didn't move on me so we're just going to follow this all the way around 
And then we're gonna go ahead and clean this up just so you could still see like the scalloped edges of the plates. Also, so you can still see the shape of our bunny here. So after that is done, here she is, absolutely gorgeous. And I can't wait to use these plates on so, so much more. And you guys head over to my Instagram. It's down in the description box because y'all just need to see how I just decorated the house so using. We're gonna start off with this plastic egg from Dollar Tree. And I didn't wanna bore you cause this took three coats to cover with Rust-Oleum's chiffon paint. Now I'm going to be taking, um, this is Elephant by Waverly, and we are going to do the splatter effect. Now, yes, I know there are cleaner ways of doing this, but your girl does not mind getting a little dirty here. So I'm just taking this stencil brush from Dollar Tree, using my finger to brush through the little bristles on here. And just keep in mind, the more paint you put on that brush, the more splatter effect you are going to get with this egg. So after we're done with that, we are gonna go ahead and dress this girl up and we're grabbing the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and we're connecting it to the bottom. Now I love that this egg had a flat base for us because it, it just looks so good when you set it out for decor. We're gonna cut that out and then we're gonna grab a piece of lace and this lace fit perfectly. And we're gonna go ahead and add that. The bottom's not gonna show, so it doesn't matter if it connects or not. Then after that, he, of course your girl has to add some more and some more, okay? So taking these little, they're paper flowers from Hobby Lobby I got on clearance. And I'm gonna glue those on. And then uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm like guacamole, I'm extra too, okay? And so I just have to keep going, I can't stop. So I add these paper flowers and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have pearls from Dollar Tree. So let's add some pearls in here. So I grab my box and we have big pearls and we have the small pearls from Dollar Tree. So then I start just kind of putting them wherever I think look great. This is what's fun about like the shabby chic, like you could add as much or as little as you like and I just couldn't stop. So I'm gonna add the pearls on here and then I see little diamond pieces at the corner of my eye and then I'm like, oh man, I gotta add these too. They're just so pretty. And if you're a bling baby, you add that bling, okay? Just, just add as much as you want. I loved the addition. It kind of like pulled everything going down the sides with these diamonds, kind of pulled everything back into the middle to focus on the flowers. And I absolutely love the way this came out. And y'all, if you wanna see how I actually like um, style these in my home as decor, make sure you go head over to my Instagram account. The link is down in the description box because I will take pictures of how I place them in my home for you guys to see. And this huge speckled egg came out so gorgeous. I have it styled with some books on one of our new um, tables and it's gorgeous. Next All right. DIY. This is actually a new frame at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take it apart. We're gonna paint it chiffon. This is my absolute favorite DIY, okay? Um, I'm gonna double coat this cause I'm trying to cover up the shine on here because it's gonna show through our tissue paper. Yes, we're using the tissue paper again. So I paint everything that's yellow. That's what it looks like when we put the two coats on. Hank has to come visit again. A lot of Hank in this video. Now taking Mod Podge again. If you guys don't like Mod Podge, I don't know what to do you. Um, we are gonna lay this tissue paper on top of here and again, pat it, but if it wrinkles up, I say, hey, I love it. It adds texture, I love that, and we want it to be rustic anyways. So I'm just pressing this down around, and then I am going to cut the middle out. Now y'all, even though these are spring, okay, doesn't the, don't these DIYs scream Mother's Day? Like especially this one, y'all, go search Mother's Day in your Cricut Design Space and let me tell you how much stuff is going to pop up so that you can customize this so easily. So now I'm taking the edges and I am just applying the Mod Podge, 
pressing it down and I'm gonna continue that all the way around the outer edges. Now the corners were so easy. All I did was cut off the excess tissue paper, get a little Mod Podge up in there and they went down easy peasy, okay? Uh, I didn't think this was gonna be my favorite one, but it ended up definitely being my favorite one. Okay, so now the inside right here. So I don't know what was happening, but I kept ripping the tissue paper, but all you have to do is get your, um, rip other pieces of the tissue paper off and then apply some Mod Podge on there and then you fix the little holes. Now I'm just pushing down the paper on the inside, which doesn't really matter because we're gonna cover that up anyways. So now taking this box from Dollar Tree, um, I was like, okay, I know if I paint over this, that rough, the rough edges are going to show. So I'm like, how can I cover this up? Because I really wanted to use it. It was perfect size. So then, yeah, girl grabs her beads and I just double stack them on each side. I think it was like five on each row. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint this chiffon, but of course I'm going to do two coats on this one here. And then after that is dry, I distress it. I really want the beads to pop out. Now we're gonna attach now this. we have our decal. And y'all, like I said, Mother's Day, this can so easily be personalized, so easy by just putting like mom on it or grandma or anything like that. And imagine the gifts that you can make and it's gonna be so easy. I showed you, it's easy peasy, okay? And look at how beautiful this is like this is boutique worthy and how easy it is to customize it with your Cricut is absolutely insane and there's so many color choices and vinyl and stuff it's oh I love that it's my favorite yeah, for sure and sent you okay now for this next DIY we are going to be taking the antique and then the mineral chalk paint from Waverly. And we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did for that milk jug, which I'll leave the link up in the cards and down in the description box for you. We're gonna mix those together and taking this Waverly chalk paint brush, I'll leave the link down in the description box. I am basically like stippling this, is stippling a word? Basically pouncing it up and down, up and down, making sure that it is blended. And then you're gonna continue it all the way around the back. Now I added tons of antique wax to it and for the rusted look, this looks amazing. It looks phenomenal, but I wanted just a little bit more of that gray in there. So we are gonna go back and add just a little bit. So make sure you blend this very well. You don't want it to look like polka dots or like, remember like the 90s, you know, paint jobs on like the walls. Yeah, no, we don't want that. So make sure you just blend it in. Now I'm taking this image I got from Google and uh, I'll try and link it down in the description box for you. So what I did here was I basically just set it in our morning coffee. The coffee wasn't hot or anything. I just let it sit for five minutes in the coffee and now I'm just drying it with my heat gun. You could also put it in the oven at your lowest setting for about five minutes, making sure to check on it, okay? And now you have yourself this nice, colored vintage looking paper instead of a stark white piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and tear all the edges off of this here just to not make it look so neat. You know, I thought about cutting the bunny completely like out of it, but I wanted this more to look kind of like a, a label versus a cutout image. So I wanted it wrinkly. Now I'm taking some Mod Podge and I'm just gonna brush that on the back. I didn't want a bunch of Mod Podge on the outside and this ended up just working great. Just the Mod Podge, I rubbed it on there, perfect. I will say I did spray Rust-Oleum Matte Spray Paint after I was done with this next step because it was starting to kind of flake off. So this is just our leftover paint and I'm just getting the sides and brushing it on there just to get it all together. And then this is Hanky. He wanted love. It is freezing in my basement. I don't have any, um, the vents don't travel down here. So I have like a little standalone heater, but it was nice to have him come give me some cuddles today. That's all he wanted. 
Somebody said I should make uh, Hank some pins and like try and sell them and donate a portion to an animal shelter, which may be a great idea. All right, so taking this burlap, I actually got a bunch of this from Dollar Tree during the summer. You could also get it at Walmart. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that thicker uh, seam of this burlap here and I am hot gluing it to the rim of the planter. Now, if you noticed, I did paint the top of this because it did show through. I thought I was going to kind of like double layer this, but decided against it. So you do have to paint the entire bucket here. So going around, we are going to uh, finish this off. And then I'm gonna tuck it in. Uh, you guys, I don't even think I told you, this is a Dollar Tree planter bucket, the ones that are like wrapped in twine around the top. I don't think I said that before. This is from Dollar Tree, so you guys know. So then I just tuck that remainder burlap in. I'm gonna hot glue that, the two seams together, press it towards the back so it's kind of attached to the planter as well. And that is it. That is it for this Dollar Tree um, planter and it turned out gorgeous. I already put it up in my house. This, I don't know. I don't know if this one's my favorite or the big egg is. I'm not sure which one's your guys' favorite. I just love how this turned out. And it's, all right, you guys, we are starting off with one of these beware signs from the Dollar Tree. Some brown shipment paper because y'all know I like covering up the back of my signs. So I'm just going to lay that down. We're going to trace it out like we usually do. And then we will proceed to cut it out and glue it on the back of the signs. I love doing this because I love a finished uh, looking product and I don't want to take the time to scrape all of that stuff off. So taking a craft knife, we're going to go ahead and just clean it up. Then I am taking a chiffon uh, by Rust-Oleum, and we're just giving that a messy brush on here. We, we don't need it to look perfect. And then here comes the decal. I got this at Dollar Tree quite some time ago. Thought I would have to use Mod Podge on the back, but I didn't. It was super sticky. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and press that down and then I grab my Mod Podge and just kind of sprinkle that over our decal. And then we're gonna go ahead and rub that in with a brush. Now I just put a light amount of um, Mod Podge on here because I just wanted to make sure that it didn't pill up or anything as time went by. And then you're gonna go ahead and let that dry. And then we are going to move on to distressing. So I added more chiffon paint just to, I wanted to blend that decal in. So I just got my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and kind of went over it. I even went over the decal itself with like the remaining product on the brush. And then I grab my, um, what do you call that? Antique Wax by Waverly. And we're gonna go ahead and distress this down. And then I move, I was trying to hide the decal, but it kind of defined it a little bit, but that's okay because it still ended up being perfect. So let's clean up our space with our little ladybug. Now we're gonna go ahead and take twine. I'm gonna wrap that around four times. I was trying to cover the holes on here. So if you are gonna do that, just make sure you use hot glue in a few places because as you get towards the edge, it starts kind of falling off there. So I'm gonna wrap four times on each side. Then I'm grabbing these flowers. I don't know, these are from like Walmart, Hobby Lobby. I've had them forever. And we are just going to make a little arrangement with some hot glue on the bottom right corner. I debated putting some in the top left, but seriously, it it was enough. And you guys, all of these today are going to be so quick and easy. You are going to love them, I promise. And I kept changing my mind because my favorites kept changing and this for sure has become my favorite one. And I cannot wait to take down my Valentine's Day decor already and decorate for spring. So yeah, mama had, I gotta have a drink. It was the weekend. Uh, so look at how beautiful this looks. It is fresh. It is so spring and farmhouse and it reminds me of sunshine and being outside. I cannot wait for those days here in Kansas. Right. This one's easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy legit the easiest thing okay so i got this frame we are reusing it i used it at a baby shower take it all apart 
And then we're gonna grab Blush Pink by Rust-Oleum. All of my paints are by Rust-Oleum today. And I am doing one coat all over this frame. And I decided on one coat because this frame has so much texture and detail in it that I wanted those to pop through without having to distress it and do all of that. So just one coat of this, make sure to get inside the frame as well, because you will see it when you put your picture in. And then y'all, I did something. I made my first, first principle for y'all, okay? So make sure to clean the glass before you put the principle in and make sure your glass is dry. And look at this is gonna be available to you guys. I was so excited and proud of myself for making one. So just taking the back of the frame, we're gonna go ahead and trace this out so that it fits perfectly. Once we trace and we cut, you're gonna go ahead and stick that principle in your frame and you are done. This can go y'all in a wreath. You can put it on a table like I am going to do and look at the detail in the frame alone. Look at how amazing that looks. And then fresh flower market seeds, stems, blooms. It's just gorgeous. And that link will be for you guys. We're going to take these wood blocks. Thank you, Leona, for sending me, me these. And this is that Minecraft, Minecraft, mine game thing. And I wanted to point out that there's holes that go straight through and then there's holes in it that only go through these two sides. So make sure to look out for that. Then taking skewers and some foam blocks, I am going to attempt to paint these. Now I know a lot of you are cringing, but my favorite way to paint beads for like a beaded garland is on a wire with spray paint. However, I do not have these colors in spray paint. So some of you suggested the skewer method. So th this was my take on the skewer method and all I'm doing is brushing them up and down and it does a good, I mean, after I got the hang of it, it was pretty good. So we're going to do four of these in chiffon, four in blush pink, four in serenity blue. And I do do two coats on all of the beads, dry them off. We're going to go ahead and set those to the side. Now taking that same scrapbook paper, I tried to get a corner that had more details in it and a little bit more color, I guess you could say. Taking our glue stick again, we're gonna go ahead and put that scrapbook paper right on there, press firmly down, and it will not go anywhere. All right, so taking this mineral chalk paint, I am just brushing it on the edges just so it looks a little bit more worn and with the scrapbook paper. All right, so slowing it down for you, we're gonna make a tassel. So I am wrapping this around, this is I think uh, my scraper tool, but you can use four fingers, you could use anything you want. And you're gonna wrap it until you get the thickness you want. Then we're gonna take it off. You're gonna grab a smaller piece of twine and we are going to double knot that around our loop, leaving longer on the bottom and then like a smaller loop on top. So you're going to cut the bottom piece, the longer half, in half, and that's gonna be like your tassels. And now we have our loop right here. That's our small loop. That's where we're going to feed the twine. Here we go, feeding that in there. I'm going to double knot this up for you guys. There we go. And this is now going to become our twine that we're gonna feed our beads onto. So cut a good amount. I didn't know how long this was gonna be. It was way too long. And then I'm taking some painter's tape, wrapping it around that end so I could easily put these beads through. Now, right away, as I start this, I'm like, whoa, these are way too bright for this scrapbook paper. Like they need to be distressed. They need to look dirty because they just were not going. So we're going to finish this up and then I'll show you what we do, which is I'm pretty sure you guys know what we do. <laughs> so we're going to double knot this to our little egg here. And then and then what did I take? Mineral. <laughs> and we're going to just put that on top of our beads. I focused a lot on that first pink bead um, just so it didn't look so bright. And this totally completed the look. I mean, it tied everything in. It tied it into the scrapbook paper. I was so excited. Now, I know I've made beaded garlands before, you guys, but this was with a different method of not actually using the beads. So I hope you enjoyed this DIY because I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. Okay. We are going to take these wood 
they're not blanks. I know, why do I forget? Anyways, we're taking four of these from the Dollar Tree and we are going to start building a box basically. So I'm just putting hot glue on these slats. Do not put it all the way down on the wood because then you're gonna have hot glue coming out everywhere, which we don't want. So make sure we're getting parchment paper so it doesn't stick to our mat. Just hot gluing it, hot, hot, hot glue. Attach your wood. There you go. We got our box. How easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy was that? Then taking our blush pink again, we are gonna go ahead and paint the entire box. However, I do not paint the inside of it. I don't like painting the insides usually of my crafts because I feel like it just adds more dimension and helps it pop a little bit more. Now we are in our Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm doing an amazing job at showing you what I'm doing, obviously, but all I'm doing is starting from the edges and pulling that Antique Wax inwards just to give it a little bit more dimension. I thought it looked a little too plain, just pink. Then I'm gonna take these gold thumbtacks from Dollar Tree. Now I pushed these in and hammered them in. If you don't wanna go through all of that, you can simply take your wire cutters, cut off the actual tack part, and then hot glue these on to your board. So again, I apologize, you guys, these aren't in frame. Uh, I'm trying a new angle. But again, let me know what you think about the angle. Let me know which one is your favorite project as well. But look at how cool. So as you guys notice, I didn't put a bottom on it. And the reason being is because I wanted you to be able to just like kind of put it over things, stuff more things in there. And I love the way that this turned out it is so super chic. I love just the whole arrangement I did in it. And we are taking one of these like little wood round thing pieces. I'm gonna sand the entire block down because you guys, these are rough, rough, rough. So get the front, get the back, get the sides very, very good because we're going to be using those same beaded stickers. Now I put a row on, basically we're gonna do three rows of these. So um, on the beads themselves, it takes three of the rows plus three like oddball, oddball beads. And we're gonna put three of those. So I'm gonna kind of go go speed up through that. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Okay, here we go. Now I paint the front with chiffon. Don't do that, you guys. You know, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, don't don't paint the front. Paint the sides first and then the front and the back. So again, with the dabbing motions, just to get in between all those beads, you can see I did three rows of them. We do have to do double coats of these because I ended up having to go in with the turquoise and it was popping through a lot. So I did do two coats and I did also paint the back. Now going back in with that tissue paper, we are going to rip a bunch up. You're gonna put as much as you want and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take a little bit of Mod Podge, apply that on there. I love the way all of these turned out, how they all go together, the simplicity of cutting the decals and the stencils and how the decals really pop with the black vinyl is like, oh, I love it. Okay, so now I'm going over this. I am going to sand it down just like we did. And then I was like, uh, hello girl, you got a blank background. Why would you leave it blank when you could put this beautiful tissue paper on the back? So I did that, sanded it down. Go to the side though, so you don't distress your beads. And now we are going to head over to, oh no, no, we gotta distress it. Of course, don't forget distressing. I always distress, hello. Now we are right. going to take our decal, but of course, and we are gonna transfer it from point A to point B. And it is so crazy how beautiful this kind of just like pops out at you. And you guys saw that took me like a few minutes, I mean, Granted, there are like thousands of designs though to choose from. So, I mean, but that's nice. Like, I love it. Look at that. Yes, 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 ma'am. Oh, I love how all of these turned out, y'all. And so easy to make these custom decals. All right. So we're done with that section. Now we're gonna go ahead and get that cotton twine again in that beautiful blue color. We're gonna go ahead and string it through. So I just kind of like double looped it 
you'll see right here, there you go, fed the twine through. Then I'm going to put uh, some tape at the end because we're gonna feed some beads through here. And I'm gonna do three natural beads, smaller ones. And I have these coffee stained beads as well. I keep like a box of coffee stained beads. And we are gonna add those to this as well. And it just really brings like the vintage kind of like shabby chic vibe to this. I love that little pop of the coffee. So next I'm going to create a tassel. I'm just looping it around as much as I want. It's, a, it's however you want to do it, okay? I'm gonna do this a little differently. Uh, one of my subscribers, Kelly, sent me this lace, so I'm gonna cut this into really skinny pieces here. And I'm gonna do this tassel a little differently. So I do this, then I take my tassel off. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half now. And why I'm doing that is because I wanna kind of alternate the lace and the tassels so that they're kind of all mixed together and one isn't just on one side. So next I'm taking the string that we had, I'm double knotting it so our beads don't fall out here. Then I'm gonna cut that tape off, spread it in half, and then tie our tassel to it. We're gonna get another piece of the twine and we're gonna tie off our top just like a tassel. And look at that. Yes, I'm clapping for myself because this was so easy, y'all. I better read in the comments that you guys have taken your Cricut out of the box and you are about to try all of these DIYs because of how easy I showed you it is to make all of this in your design. This is, these are just the planters from Dollar Tree. They come in a two pack for a dollar. And I'm just doing a base coat of chiffon by Rust-Oleum because we are using tissue paper and I didn't want the like terracotta color to come through. So you're gonna repeat that for both of them. And then after we're done and those dry up, which they dry super fast, I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree um, tissue paper and we're gonna cut some squares out and the squares were already there for me. So I just cut those out and then I'm gonna get this Mod, Mod Podge, and this is the squeezy one from Dollar Tree, and I love it because it's so convenient to have at your crafter's table. Now, as you can see, I pat down on the tissue paper. If you were to rub it with your hands, it would tear so easily because it's so thin. So I highly recommend going little by little, thin coat of Mod Podge, pat it down, and you're just gonna follow that all the way around your pot. And you wanna make sure to get really good on where you're gonna connect your seam. So you'll see I do that, overlap them, and then I'm going to cut that excess off. And then I accidentally ripped the top because I started rubbing. Yes, so don't do that. Okay, but that's okay, it's an easy fix. Just put some more tissue paper on there. We're gonna let both of these dry. I just did the same exact thing for the second pot here. And then you guys, sorry, I didn't record it, but I just cut the excess off the top and the bottom of the tissue paper and then put some more Mod Podge on the top and the bottom to secure that down. And now we are going to be adding some super cute florals. So I get these from Walmart and I call them baby eucalyptus. I don't think they're called baby eucalyptus, but yes, I got these and then I got these pink. They almost look like baby's breath. I don't know what they're called. I should have probably looked at the tag. And I'm gonna just add those just for that little pop of pink to tie in, of course, the pots and all the other decor that I am making in this video. And these turned out so adorable. These would look great in a tear tray. They would be cute on like hung up with some twine. I just love how fresh and clean and bright these look and I can't wait to see if they fit actually in my tiered tray because these are like paint color is my new favorite. Okay so this one is super easy. So taking these eggs from Dollar Tree I'm going to take a puffy paint marker. This is from Arteza and I am going to be just doing a bunch of like intricate designs on them. I wanted them, of course, to look shabby chic. So for this one, I'm just doing some like stems, putting some leaves. They're all going different angles. And uh, I, I, I'm by no means an artist, y'all. So, I mean, you can do it. Start off simple and then work your way to a little bit more detail. 
But I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up and then we're gonna let them dry so the puff paint can thicken up. I do not do the backs of them. I like, look, if you mess up, you just wipe it off. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you do have to let them thicken up. Now I'm going to just um, show you a couple more. So this one I decided to go around with a straight line. Then we're gonna go ahead and add some scallops to this one. Now, if you can see, I'm using my pinky finger to just stabilize my hands. We're gonna travel around. I'm gonna add a couple polka dots here. I also get my heat gun and just kind of speed up the process just a little bit. So this one became my favorite. And you, I do fill the entire front of this one up, but you can just stop halfway and that looks gorgeous too. But these are like swirly doodads, I don't know. And then for this one, I did a flower, just kind of like half of a flower. And then we're gonna do kind of like the petals floating off of it. Then we're gonna set them all aside. Like I said, we are going to let these dry up and then we're gonna come back with Rust-Oleum Pink Blush. Now I decided to paint all of them in this pink. You could do you and do any color you want. I do wanna mention that one had to do two coats and two, that when you get over by the puff paint, go a little lighter on the paint because the paint kind of wants to settle in all of those little cracks and then you can't see the details as much. So go light. And I just had to show you this one. I know you guys know how to paint, but it just was so stinking beautiful. I'm obsessed with this one. I probably would have done all of them like this if I would have seen the outcome of this one. So again, two coats of paint. Then we're gonna take that extra paint we had before, our stencil brush from Dollar Tree, and we're just going to de-stress all of these. This just makes all of that like puff paint and that texture just pop out at you so you really see it. And it's those small details to me that make something that is Dollar Tree look so high end and well put together. So I love the way these turned out. Please make sure to tell me which ones are your favorite and make sure you guys, if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, to make sure to subscribe and like. Head down to the description box too so you can check out our Unicorn Dust Designs Facebook group. I'm on Instagram and uh, yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. So, so moving on, we're gonna take this Christmas tree. Yes, Christmas tree. And we're gonna take all of this garland stuff off. Now, as I removed it, I was like, you know what? It's black, it's perfect. Like it looks like wire to me. So I'm gonna grab this jute cord. I will have this in my Amazon store link. It is a little bit smaller and softer than what you would find at Dollar Tree, but it is more expensive. So I'm going to wrap this around. Now, if you like neat, then definitely do your rows, but I am just wrapping this around like super messy. I want it to be rustic, shabby, and I like that the black is showing through because it looks like a metal frame is underneath this jute. It doesn't look like it's plastic, so it was totally okay with me. So as you saw, I put some glue down at the bottom and I'm just putting glue up top here and it's been holding perfectly fine. We're gonna cut that remainder off. There you go, easy peasy, Dollar Tree Squeeze. All right, so then I grabbed the same jute. We're gonna go ahead and tie some, uh, I guess a handle on here. Um, you don't even have to use a handle. You could have this like laying down on a table with stuff like coming out of it and that would look cute. Okay, now taking a book, you guys know I love books. This was already damaged, so I felt okay doing this. Uh, but I'm going to freehand cut some petals out of these book pages, and then I'm gonna cut a little slit down the middle. Not all the way up, just a little tiny one. And what you're gonna do is you are going to take your petals, you're gonna place a little bit of hot glue on one of the tabs, and then you're overlapping the pieces together. Then taking a skewer, I am just rolling those petals back so they have a little bit more texture. They look a little bit more lifelike and not so straight. 
<laughs> I guess you can say. Um, and we are gonna continue doing this for all of the petals. Now, I did this freehand, but you can find templates on Google for free. Your Cricut also actually has templates that you can cut, and you can use paper, newspaper, cardstock, whatever it may be. So after our petals are done, we're gonna cut a strip and I'm just cutting little slits all throughout this piece. And this is what's gonna become the middle of our flower. Then I'm just going to start rolling this up. Now this had a few like layers of paper, so it kind of got a little messy, but you could also use pearls in the middle if you want. You could um, roll some jute up. Now it, does, it didn't look like much, but see you just kind of fan it out and then it starts looking a little bit more full. So then we're going to take another piece of our paper. You're gonna cut a little circle and this is going to be the base of our paper flower. So we are gonna start hot gluing these to the base. And as you hot glue each one on, you're going to overlap them just a tad bit. And don't go like halfway, just a tad, like at the very end of that previous petal, that's where you're gonna set the other petal on. I hope I'm making sense here. So we are going to carry all of those petals around and you can make your petals different sizes too so that it's bigger on the outside, smaller on the inside. I didn't do that. I just used these extra two petals, made it look a little bit more full inside. And then we're gonna go ahead and hot glue our middle in here and then I'll fluff it up too just so it looks a little bit more full. There you go. And now we have ourselves a beautiful paper flower and that's just gonna help add a little bit more detail for when we style our basket. Now I'm just taking some pages and you guys, I'm just shredding it. It's not anything, it's not a wow factor by any means, but we're just gonna shred these and then I'm just gonna show you how I ended up styling this and putting it together. Oh, so I, <laughs> do you see this? This is what happens when you apply too much heat to these plastic eggs, okay? <laughs> I painted these with the Serenity Blue, did double coats, and as I was drying it, I was like, why are these get it? Why did this get so big? Yeah, it bubbles up. So this is how it turned out. I absolutely love the addition of the blue eggs that pop, the detail of the paper flower, and you can change this seasonally as well, which is great because you get to repurpose this DIY, which I absolutely love. Wow. So you're taking a shadow box. You're gonna go ahead, we're gonna deconstruct all of this stuff, and then we're gonna take our, uh, what do you call it? This is like a scraper. I got these from Dollar Tree and they came in a four pack. Absolutely love them. They're um, little razor blades and you can, you know, put them back in safety wise. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, I know everybody is gonna say you can use acetone to remove this. It does not work for me. I have tried it with 100% acetone and it never works. So I just go straight to what I know works for sure. And it's just taking a razor blade to the letterings and letterings and scraping it off. All right, now with the Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue, I'm gonna go ahead and do two coats of this to the outside and then the inside of the piece that is to the right. Now I highly recommend just going ahead and painting the inside of the frame on the one that I was, I'm holding now, because when you put it all back together, you still see some of the black. So taking the backing now, I it was wood, but I wanted a darker wood so that our decal would pop off of it. So I go ahead and get my scrapbook paper. We're gonna take our jumbo glue stick, attach that to the backing. Love the jumbo glue stick. It is so much better than having to deal with Mod Podge for things like this that are so easy, you know? Then I just attaching my uh, vinyl decal. I did get this off the Cricut uh, Access Studio. I love the saying, I just had to use it. Uh, do I show it? I think I do. It says where flowers bloom, so does hope. So taking more of the little mini flowers, we're gonna go ahead and kind of put the back, back, put the backing back on. So right here, and then I'm just gonna throw some of the florals in there just to gauge how many I wanted. Snap that back together and you are done. I told y'all these DIYs are so 
easy. Okay, it's not done. I added antique wax, which I wasn't going to, but my paint started shipping already. So I was like, you know what? Let's just distress this baby. Let's, let, let's make her look like her brothers and sisters, you know? So I went ahead and did that and I'm so glad I did because it looks so good with that wood backing on there that everything happens for a reason. So this is how she came out and look at with that wood and the flowers. It just looks so rustic and natural and that saying it just oh, gets to my heart for sure. I love it. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. I love it. So easy. Again, if you guys don't like to paint, then you probably didn't like this video <laughs> because it's a lot of painting. So taking these glass containers from Dollar Tree, I they did come in a lot of colors. I purchased the clear because I knew I was going to paint these. So I'm just taking a chip brush. We're going to paint all around this. We're going to get that silver part as well. And then we are going to wait until they thoroughly dry, of course, with our heat gun then taking our mineral again, we are distressing it. Now I know distressing, like I've said, isn't for everybody, but I really think it adds that texture. It makes these little ridges pop up off of the container. And that's just my preference. So again, you do you, you know what I say, okay? If you guys are loving kind of like this shabby chic look, give me a thumbs up so I know to do more of them for you. All right, taking some of the floral foam, we're gonna just stick all that in there. And then taking our scrap skewers that skewers that we used earlier, I'm gonna take my dog clippers. You could get these at the Dollar Tree. And then that burlap pot, you guys, I don't know where I got this from, but I used my Cricut to cut out these birds and I did use it on the burlap fabric setting, just so you know if you have one. And we are just gonna hot glue these right onto our skewers. I didn't paint the skewers or anything like that. And now I was trying to figure out, do I want them staggered? Do I want them the same? I don't know, but I think I made one just a little bit taller. So then taking some more Spanish moss, we're just going to go ahead and stuff those in the bottom of our vases here. And that is it. Well, like I've said, easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed these farmhouse spring decor ideas. I hope it inspires you to create something of your own. Make sure to check my description box down below for Kristen's link along with our favorite. Facebook. So these are quick, you guys. This is a grapevine wreath. I got a bunch of random florals and the grapevine wreath is from Dollar Tree. And what's awesome is it kind of was in the shape of a Easter egg. So just with random florals I had, I went ahead and what's great about Grapevine Reese is they're so tightly like bounded together that all I had to do is take the stems of the flowers and I just kind of shimmy them in between the branches or the twine that's tying it all together. So with these, these are peonies. I did get them on Amazon. There's like, they come in like a huge little bundle for $10. I'll make sure to link them in my description box. And I knew I had another one. And oh, how lucky was I that it was a contrasting color. Did the same thing, just stuck it in the branches. There you go. Seriously, that's all I did. Stick it in the branches, put a couple dabs of hot glue. Sorry, I'm not in frame on the stems just to added security. And then I'm going to take some of this baby's breath as well. And again, I just put it through the branches or maybe this one I did the twine. I'm not sure. And then watch, I'll show you as it I get it in there. That one was tough, but like, it's not going anywhere. These things are in there. See how it's through there. Cut the rest of that stem off, put a little bit of more glue. And now I'm going to take my, this is like a plaque from Dollar Tree, taking the chiffon rustoleum again. And we are just gonna do a messy, messy coat. I, I don't think I ever do clean coats. These are all gonna be messy coats. Then with the same brush, I did not clean it. I'm going in with my antique Waverly wax and I'm just putting it right on those corners, on all the edges. And this just adds so much dimension to this piece. I love it. All right, then taking some decals that I made on my Cricut and how awesome was it that I had the most perfect color vinyl. I have no idea what color this is, y'all. It was in my stash. 
but I was lucky. So I decided to print out Hello Spring and gosh, this just turned out so great. I'm happy with all of these. Look at it, love it. And like I said, simple. All I'm gonna do is take that plaque and I'm going to, of course I'm not in frame, sorry. I'm trying out a new angle. Let me know how you guys like this angle. All I did was put hot glue wherever the plaque touched the wreath and that's it y'all that's it can we say gorgeous like hello spring yes you're welcome in my home anytime because this looks so high end like yeah i love it i just love it why y'all is an eight by eight piece of wood i'm using serenity blue by rustoleum of course messy brush with a chip brush that is how i roll with everything i paint yeah, I don't think I paint anything nice and neat. So you're gonna do the front, the back, the sides. Then I'm attaching a sawtooth hanger, which you technically don't have to do depending on where you want it because this actually stands up all by itself. So that is up to you if you wanna put a hanger on the back. So now taking a baby glass jar, y'all, I have tons of these from when my babies were babies and that was four years ago. That's how long I hold on to stuff. Okay, so I am just tying that around. We're gonna do a classic little bow on this and now we are gonna attach it to our wood sign. So I'm gonna take some super glue from Dollar Tree. It is comparable to E6000 and I love it. And then we're gonna surround that super glue with hot glue. So the hot glue is gonna give us that immediate hold. Super glue is gonna give us that long-term hold that we need. Then I'm gonna take a stencil. You could also use rub-ons. You can use the word uh, wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. You can use your own penmanship, carbon paper, so many other options other than vinyl. So I did Be Humble. Now I'm taking these beautiful mini roses from Dollar Tree putting those inside and you have this beautiful, bright and airy spring decor piece. And imagine with little different sayings and if you were to do like the chiffon color, the blue and the pink and putting them up on the wall next to each other, it would look so absolutely gorgeous. Let's keep going you guys. All right, these are the little galvanized signs from Dollar Tree and you don't have to rip them off. <laughs> you just have to unscrew them. They unscrew and then that whole wood piece actually comes off. There are holes that are left in it. So I just wanted to show you that so you know. And then I'm just gonna take off that. And then we are just going to apply Rust-Oleum Chiffon in a messy brush with my chip brush. Then I'm doing the same thing with the antique wax. And this is just gonna give it that rusty old look, which I love. And then we're gonna let that dry. And we are going to get, these are also from Walmart. I believe I got these on clearance during the summertime. And I'm gonna bundle these together. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab the uh, twine. And I go ahead, just tie a knot around it first. I don't know why I was all complicated and wrapping it around and it was falling apart. Just tie a knot, then wrap it around, okay? All right, then we're gonna go ahead and cut these, the bottom of the stems off. I hot glue it to our galvanized sign, but then I realize that the holes are still showing. So I get another two stems and I'm able to push this one through the twine, but this one was giving me a little difficulty. So it kind of broke off, which is fine because hot glue to the rescue, just douse it with some hot glue and you're good to go. And that's how easy this DIY was. And the same thing, if you made multiples of these and hung them up together, they would look so gorgeous. Or even just putting the floral arrangement like on a wood sign and putting a quote next to it. There's so many things that you can do with all of these pieces. So taking a bamboo cutting board, I cleaned it with alcohol, hoping my decal would stick to it a little bit more, but I still had some issues with this decal sticking to it. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I did create this on my cameo myself. So it just says spring is in the air. Use a little mason jar. Do you guys know where we're going with this one? So easy. Now taking Mod Podge, I am just putting a very light coat just to make sure this vinyl doesn't come up, even though it's permanent. It wasn't really adhering the way I wanted it to, to our bamboo board. So go ahead and let that dry. 
Then taking some felt flowers. I got these at Joann's on clearance a long time ago and never used them. The backings on the flowers themselves are already kind of like dried up. So I had to hot glue them all down. But just playing around with placement, you're then just gonna take some hot glue, put your felt flowers on. You could use paper flowers. You can use like the fake flowers from Dollar Tree. So many possibilities make paper flowers with your cutting machines. And that's it for the front. Then I just got some twine, hot glued it onto the back of her, one on each side and easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy y'all. I can't believe how easy these were and I hope you guys really, really enjoyed them today. Thank you for visiting my channel. If you are here from Heidi Sambles page, I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch and uh, to listen to me. <laughs> so remember you guys, if you like and you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give a thumbs up and to subscribe. All right, you guys, for those of you YouTubers or somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel, I am hosting a new monthly challenge called Try It Tuesday, where you can recreate at least three DIYs that you love from another crafter. Uh, you must give them credit for it. It is going to be every last Tuesday of the month, and I will be putting this in my community tab so you can really see the rules and guidelines for this video. So I hope to be seeing you on this challenge. It will be starting the last Tuesday of February. So put it on your calendars. I hope to see what inspires you guys to recreate because I know I can't wait to try out some of y'all's DIYs and give you guys shout outs on my page. So with that said, y'all, I hope you have a good week. I hope you had a great day and I will be seeing you back here on Thursday for a dollar. All right, so for this one, we're gonna take two of these tag signs from Dollar Tree. I am going, so first I was like, oh, I'm gonna get these little dot stickers. I'm gonna go one by one, got up to four. And then I was like, no, there's no way this is happening. I'd be here forever. So then I got these, um, I don't, I'm just gonna call them beads and they're all connected to each other. These are from, from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna line this entire tag with these beads. like. And oh my gosh, the detail that it gives and how easy they are to work with is just crazy. So I'm gonna go up the entire side. I'm gonna go up the opposite side. And then I'm gonna show you y'all, look at how easy these were to bend into the scalloped edges right here. Now I do wish that I would have taken a razor blade and kind of like cut through them only cause the like middle Part of it kind of bubbled up a little bit but it was so nice that these moved with the scallops yes ma'am okay so after we are done completing that i have to change an lol's top here real quick we're gonna finish that up and then we're gonna, we're gonna go, go ahead and stick this on and we're not using it as like an actual decal so we're using this and we're gonna paint over it to leave us a really nice high end print so taking our chiffon, I'm going to cover all of that vinyl up. Yes, I'm covering the vinyl up. This is a great way to use vinyl, y'all, especially if you want to do like little wood sign projects or anything and you want to see the wood through it. This is a great way to do it. So taking your brush, make sure you pounce in between all of those little beads so that we can cover some of the paint. Uh, they are light pink, so it's not, it's not that bad. So we are going to cover this all up. Now the weeding. This is so relaxing for some people, even just watching it. <laughs> so you're just taking all of that vinyl off and look at how beautiful it is. And it leaves almost like, it looks like your, it looks like your words are wood. And you're gonna continue to do this all the way up the sign. So we're gonna move on to this. We're gonna finish the entire thing, weed our flower out. Absolutely gorgeous. Now taking that antique wax and our um, our oh, bleh, distressing brush, I'm gonna make those beads pop out. You, I mean, oh my gosh, the detail that these beads add is absolutely phenomenal. And this is gorgeous. And you guys, all we had to do was get our Cricut Maker and spend a minute clicking an image and cutting it out. It's absolutely awesome. So now I'm going to apply some some Mod Podge here. I'm gonna lay that same tissue paper over here and then I'm gonna pat it down again. Remember, you're not gonna rub on this. You don't want it to rip or anything like that. 
And then I'm gonna take this sanding block, again, get all the excess tissue paper off, and now we're going to connect them together. So this is gonna be like one of those tag signs. So I'm gonna trace out the back, I'm gonna hot glue, and I did that so I didn't get the hot glue like everywhere. So applying some super glue, hot glue, I'm gonna connect those together. After that, we are going to make some tassels. So I'm taking this cotton twine, I am wrapping it around my finger 10 times, and we are going to make these little mini tassels, okay? So I am just tying around the top of it, gonna double knot that, and then y'all, I got myself a ticket to the struggle bus, it's been a while, but uh, I could not get the string through the top loop of this tassel, and oh my gosh. It made me work, let me tell you. But I do finally get it through, and I'm basically gonna loop. You see the two pieces there? Then I put tape on the end. I feed three um, natural beads through. Now taking that twine, I am going to tie it in a double knot. And next I'm gonna take three more beads, put them on there, and then attach another tassel. And Y'all, like, let me tell you, when I first, I didn't have a Cricut before I started YouTube. Um, and when I first got my box, I was super intimidated by it. But then you open the box up and there's a box in there for you. And it walks you through your first DIY. Like, it even gives you, like, the material to do it, the step-by-step -step instructions. And for those of you, I know there are, you guys have commented that you have not opened your boxes yet do it you will not be disappointed when you can make diys that look like this and look at how stunning that image is i love the bring me all the peonies i love it love it love it it just goes so well and it was so easy to cut that decal and use it love it Oh, why are you even talking about it? Why are you even talking about it? It's just there. We know it's there. You all know it's there. I've shown you like a million times. Oh, you can do it, boo. You just do what you can and rest. The best husband ever. Okay, this is me trying to look springy in the winter because it's freezing down here. But this is as springy as I could get. I found this amazing, I don't even know what it is, but I found it at Savers to go over my pregnancy belly. And it's amazing. It feels like, not that I've ever owned a pair, but I have felt a pair, LuLaRue leggings. That's what it feels like. It's like butter is so Oh, my baby buzzies, my crooked knees. Maybe my floor's crooked. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it with this house. <laughs> it's gangsta leaning. I know it is. Like, then I see my phone, and I'm like, my phone looks pretty even. So maybe it is like the actual this. I think it is because look this doesn't line up with that because they're different I don't know <laughs> love when you have conversations with yourself okay it's got to be a good one good one people are going to be seeing you for the first time got to look all presentable got yourself together Good thing this house holds because I'm sweating. I usually never sweat down here. Look, I got urine on and everything. Girl, you're fancy because you got these big gold earrings on. Yay, yay. Mom was playing. Mom was playing. What's up? <laughs> okay. I really got to figure this out because it's driving me nuts. 
to y'all? I don't know. Okay. Oh my God, this lip color is amazing. Thank you, Dollar Tree. Y'all, because I know, I know this is going to turn into bloopers. Uh, what is it? Who, who are, who's this called? Kendra Scott. Y'all know mama's cheap. Okay. Um, on your birthday month, you can get 50% off of their jewelry and I think some other of their items. You could even do it online. You don't have to go into the store. And, um, yeah, I got this one for like a previous birthday and then this one the last birthday and with like the 50% off they're like 30 bucks Ta -ting. got it okay next next piece of info what do I want to share with them one who I am um 10 on Tuesdays uh Just go with it. It's better when you just go with it. Yeah, yeah, I want those earrings to show. I don't know where these big old baggies to be hidden. Like this one sits right here, but this one's like, I don't know where to put it. Okay. Okay. I feel like with these earrings, I look so mature. I don't know why. I mean, obviously I'm mature, I'm 34. <laughs> I don't mean mature that way. I meant mature looking, you know, because I'm definitely not mature that way. Okay. All right. Stop talking to yourself and let's get on so you could get done. Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that first DIY. Can you believe that's one out of 10 DIYs that I get to show you today? As you guys know, I was super excited to jump into like regular home decor, spring decor. So I'm really, really excited. Now, I don't, I'm really, and I always say excited like a million times. Okay. What are you doing out here? What are you doing? Can you say, oh, you're so handsome. Yep. Okay, bye. You like the snow? Okay, I'll leave you alone. It's making me look like beachy, but I'm in a sweater at the beach, you know, kind of beach. Beach, 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 beach. I'm saying B E A C H. Just putting it out there. You new here? <laughs> Hi. That was weird. Okay, let's get it. Hi. <laughs> How art that was weird hi welcome back to unicorn dust designs my name is Sammy and on my channel we do DIYs with signs and there is a lot of laughter so if that's something that you are into no we had it going on there if that's something you're into Hi, <laughs> Hello. Dang, that was good. <sighs> Mama, how many energy drinks you had today? Okay. 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 <laughs> Set 
second honor of collabing with Kristen K. Yes. You know, like, uh, well, maybe you don't know if you're not a YouTuber. <laughs> all right, let's grab all this. What the, that shirt? Jeez. Like, I'm not even showing a lot of boobies, but it feels like I'm showing boobies. I don't know. Yeah, I got them, girl. I can't hide them, right? It just looks like so much. Gosh, when did I become such a mom? Hmm? All I saw was boob. That's all I saw. If only I was in my 20s again. I like keep yanking this up. Mama, don't have no shame. Okay. It is what it is, right? Wow. You did that so easy. Proud of you, sis. Mm -hmm. Look, this is even like lacy on the back and everything. <laughs> Hey, mom. <laughs> okay, we're out. Yeah. <laughs> who wants a new dog? Lit literally, who wants a new dog? He even ate paint. Oh my gosh. And then we got a sandwich container out here. The other parts of the sandwich container. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's so lucky. Mine's in a pot. Let it go. Let it go. Back. Yo, back. Beginner friendly. No. <sighs> I'm not flustered. You're flustered. Is amazing. What are you doing? You better not have drool on you, man. You need to get groomed so bad. You stink so bad. Can you tell everybody what you did today? Huh? That you were a bad boy? What'd you do? Yeah, you ate a bottle of paint. You took the dog dish out. You took the sandwich container out. You took a towel out there. I just don't know what goes through your head. There was not even food in there. I mean, why even take the paint? You know? Was that satisfying? Did you get anything out of it? No. Mm -mm. No, you didn't. You got yourself uh, some time in the kennel is what you got. Yeah. <laughs> 